Good morning, folks. It's not very often we start the news with something other than our star. But of course, the major story gripping the science world this morning is nicely summarized in one image and caption here from the Weather Channel. Folks, last night we had the third special video of the holiday season on this topic. Linked below it were six more videos on the topic if you needed to catch up. And folks, still to come here before the end of the year, we'll have your severe events to watch for, the potential for cosmic lightning to strike our planet, and what other stars in the galaxy were watching for signs they too have hit the galactic current sheet. It's a lot to put together, but we're doing our best to make the puzzle instructions. Let's go to spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last day on our star with the number one item of note being the southern coronal hole. It will deliver intensified solar wind to Earth early next week, but meanwhile the solar wind here now is currently about to calm back down. Previous stream has crested and is beginning its descent this morning, with geomagnetic conditions returning to green from those minor instabilities. In addition to the elevated plasma filament activity, that bright spot incoming top left there must be monitored for sunspot development. None yet, but it is at proper latitude. Quickly jumping to some weather alerts. Atmospheric river chugging at the west coast. Over the weekend, the system will slowly curl down that coast, affecting regions further to the south and even into southern California by late Sunday. Same weekend time frame here with the North Atlantic low continuing to drive her convergence into the southern nations. It's not moving, so after one storm marches through the Mediterranean, the next one is already on its way. Largest earthquake of the last day struck Guatemala, but the noteworthy event of the last day struck just off the coast of Africa. Folks, this earthquake is unmatched in the last 45 years in the region. In fact, I pulled the only two quakes nearby in the entire historical record to exceed what happened yesterday. Let's come back to the sun momentarily and discuss space weather induced geomagnetic currents. Specifically, their effect on power systems, where they say that one of the key problems is modeling the current as DC, when in fact, it's just a very low frequency AC current. And they say that if you're trying to model it less than 50 millihertz, or one oscillation and current direction change every 20 seconds or so, you're going to get a surprise. You know that future modelers of the climate are happy to use best guesses on dozens of inputs for the climate, but the people actually getting the data on each individual point are less fast and loose. We've got considerable uncertainties proclaimed in the ice mass loss, and that's a problem for all of those forecasts of future climate we so often hear. Up next, cotton candy planets. Well, not really. I don't like this playful name they've given to the Jupiter-sized objects that weigh in at only 1% of Jupiter's mass. They say that three of these ultra-light, massive but not at all dense planets have been found at the same star, and that it will eventually strip away their outer layers, leaving the rockier versions of the trio behind. From weird planets to weird stars. Folks, we've previously mentioned how WISE has detected cold stars, some only as hot as a pot of coffee, one that dips below freezing. If we've seen water vapor in the sun's atmosphere, it could snow on that cold star. But today, we are in the middle of those extremes, a star with the temperature of about the human body, with at most jumping up to about as hot as you can handle the shower water. But at last, that's still not very hot for a star, is it? It's only 32 light years away, so it's relatively close, and it is the fifth reddest brown dwarf ever discovered. Up next, we're going out to deep space, starting with the large-scale gas and dust clouds found across the cosmos, and they're detailing how they might collapse and shatter based on plasma pressure and internal dynamics, like temperature and kinetic energy. Link is below, along with these fun little animations. And now, a double whammy on a topic that we have already been slaughtering lately. The normal matter found where dark matter halos are meant to be. And here we're looking at pulsars, and indeed they're finding not just a halo, a positron halo. These carry the same positive charge as a proton, but a positron has only the tiny size of an electron. We detect them quite often as part of the cosmic ray spectrum here at Earth, and indeed, we've got a great confirmation of the normal matter surroundings just at a pulsar. And so let's go ahead and take that up to another level. Before today, all such halos and co-rotation and vortex filament feeding from the cosmic web have been done at galaxies that we see well. So let's go to one we don't see so well, a very distant quasar, like back to the cosmic dawn. And indeed, they've found it. 
managed to stare long enough to use shifting pixels and spectral return to model it in 3D. And so just remember, these supermassive quasars in the early universe already violate the Big Bang models. They're just too big, too fast. But it turns out, they've also been hiding these mega halos around them, again, where the dark matter magic particles were supposed to be. Folks, we greatly appreciate your support. If you missed last night's video, well, even the Weather Channel is on that topic today. That video is linked below, and be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell as those three more videos are still on the way here before 2020. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close, and of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now, it's 4.20 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.